Welcome back to the Motor Fab YouTube channel. It's a bit chilly today, actually. I've actually got a hoodie on. Uh, actually, I've got a OG hoodie, one of the Motor Fab original hoodies, which I get um, handed about all the time. Where can I get a hoodie? Where's my hoodie? When can I buy a hoodie? We've been out of stock of hoodies for a long time, so I've got, I actually got Chris Webb from Chopped Art making doing a new design so we're gonna have new hoodies really really soon uh so i'll let you know when they're ready to rock and roll so stay yeah keep your eyes peeled for those shouldn't be too long hopefully they'll be ready for winter um what else been happening we've got a little hatchback in the shop at the moment you'll see some more on that this episode um you might see that a bit more regularly as well that's that's not one of mine that's customer's car uh also there's a little bit of more oil pan that'll be the last oil pan installment i think hopefully i've got a little bit to do on that but we won't worry about putting that in another episode it's done thank goodness that was a bit of a job a bit of an ordeal the oil pan i'm glad it's over um a little bit of data logging and stuff too to show you why i did the oil pan the way i did and a few other bits and pieces in there check it out um I think we're at uh, 2,200 and something, 2,100 something subscribers, so really chuffed with that. Um, not sure what sort of goal to set there for the next, it just keeps growing, which is, is absolutely amazing, I love it. Uh, thank you very much, but we're getting a lot of watches, a lot of views, and, and not a lot of subscribers, not as many, so please, if you're watching, please leave like and subscribe, because it enables me to know that I'm producing good content so that I can keep doing what you guys like and keep giving you a good show um keep building that beautiful Monara up there isn't she lovely so yeah like and subscribe enjoy today's episode and let me know what you think check it out so we've got someone else here in the shop at the moment that will yeah actually let me know in the comments if you want to see more of this Tirana. This one's a, a bit slow build, so we'll just be doing bits and pieces on it here and there. Um, so it must be a nice little fill-in when we're waiting for bits and pieces for the Monaro. Um, and then after the Monaro is done. So today we've actually just cut the, the tubs out. What we're going to do with this one is we're going to shift the, shift the factory tub inward. Um, we've got some wheels and tyres here, but everything's packed away. One's for the back there, just dummy to mock up. This is how the arches the flares cut for the flares so we're going to put them back to standard original shift the tubs in a bit put one of our rear end setups in it uh sheet metal nine inch wheelwood brakes all the stuff so we're going to build this it'll be a really nice street car um and a you know true streeter so yeah you'll get to see bits and pieces of that along the way so let me if you want to of course let me know in the comments if you want to see more of the hatchback it'll be a um a supercharged LS in that car. So, so a bit different. Pretty cool, hopefully. Hey, looky, looky. We got goodies have come in the post today. And a free hat. Check that out. Big thanks to Nick at American Performance Imports. He looks after all our gearbox components. Uh, also purchased the complete gearbox uh, that's in the, the ute in bump in from him a few years ago and it's been absolutely faultless killer price and killer gearbox uh, nick really knows his stuff with gearboxes um i'll put the uh the number up on the screen here and yeah give nick a call he's really is a good bloke and he uh super super knowledgeable with transmissions so we've ordered the parts that we're going to be putting in our turbo 400 for the monaro here some springs valve body we got this cool uh BTE billet uh, trans brake valve body. We got our billet uh, hub there. And our trans brake solenoid. And we got our snap ring support brace, whatever you want to call it. And it's just your, um, your plate in there in front of the valve body. Some stickers and yeah, Nick's running a free hat. So yeah, give Nick a call if you're chasing any bits and we're gonna show you through these, um, we're not gonna put the stallion knife in the box. We're gonna show you through this gearbox and what goes into it. This is a bare minimal budget setup. Um, with, with the nitrous set, we probably don't need the trans brake, but if we're gonna go to the, uh, the hassle building it, 
may as well put the trans brake in for later, but I also prefer trans brakes when setting up suspension or tunes or anything, just because you get some consistency, you can leave the line the same way each time and make slight adjustments to it when you're trying to leave off the foot brake. You live in a different, potentially a different RPM every time and you can never get exactly right. And even different throttle positions under different load can create, you know, all sorts of different aspects to the, the tune. So you might try it once and then make a change, go out and does something totally different. So the trans brake is just consistent. You just flip flat to the floor on the brake, let go. You got the, uh, the two step there to take care of the RPM. We will go through all of that. So yeah, check it out. And those bits are getting ready to go in the gearbox. Thank you. Okay, so here we are back to our oil pan. A sump, as the Australians call it. Uh, you can see we're not sitting down all the way. That is because we're hitting on the oil pump. So that's, it's not by a lot, you know, 30 mil or so there, but it's also not protruding far past here. So we're gonna have a little recess, a little hump. Uh, which is going to be fine for the steering still but it's going to allow that sump to drop down to there so we're going to get that clearance first uh, and then we're going to work on the pickup you're going to see a bit today because you got the pickups got to go in in this bottom section um and then we'll also we'll have to take this top part off so we can build our windage tray and crank scraper um while it's on the motor so i know that everything's clearance well around the crank and, and the con rods the um the connecting rod bolts are usually the clearance issue so we'll get that uh, we'll get this pickup and uh, oil pump relief sorted out and then uh, we'll knock the much but that's pretty much the bare bare essentials in this case it is actually a pain because you you are getting closer to that steering arm now but this is a problem of a big block in the ktg or you even have the same sort of drama with tyrannos and stuff like that the big blocks big engine uh you can zoom in a bit better so yeah so we cut that out now i like to build things in mind that hard down so then you know you've got the clearance of the gasket so um, the problem that we're going to run into I don't know if you can see here the that's where the pickup goes in um, let me try to get that a bit more perspective there you go the um, so the top of the pickup tube is actually lower than the height of this section of the pan um, but well, we can bend the, the pickup will bend straight down and around up into here. So it may just miss it. And then obviously the thickness of the gasket is gonna bring that up higher again. So fingers crossed, we might have to just bend that the base there up a little bit to miss it. It is all getting very tight. I know I'm a small block. I run a big oil pump in that. Um, and the, yeah, the pump, pretty much just touches the sump and the sump pretty much just touches the steering rack. Um, so they, yeah, they are, they are a bit of a tight fit around that area. Right, so now that's all clearing. We're nice, we're down flat. Now we're on to the pickup. So this is our pickup. This would normally live like that. Obviously the factory was a center, center sump. Um, ours needs to live in here somewhere. It's actually too wide to fit. Uh, so we're gonna have to trim the sides down and also So we're gonna cut this this piece off. We're gonna use that. We're gonna use that uh, So we're basically gonna remake the piece between here and here and it's gonna be a funky bend to get that down into there and modify that and um, Try to clearance this as well. So a little bit of stuffing around, but we're gonna get it. So let's chop 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 
Okay, so here's my pickup. I've cut the, the side out, trim the other side a little bit, so that it fits nicely in our slot here. And that's gonna go in there. Sorry about the camera work there. That's gonna go in there. I like, oh, probably again, it's an open a topic of dispute, but I like them to be three eighths of an inch off the bottom. Um, I've had issues with ones that have been half an inch up. Again, that, that's, it's a, it's a complicated thing to get into. Um, if you're having problems because it's too far off the bottom, it's probably more so a problem of volume, and depth of the bottom of the sump away from the crank, windage, a lot of other things. Um, I've also had problems with them being too close to the bottom, they can't suck enough oil through, so um, there's a lot of factors that come into it. I like to, kind of as a starting point, like to run the pickup three eighths of an inch off the off the bottom. That's my uh, my little sweet spot that I like to use. Some of them have got a little little sucker on the bottom, um, just uh, especially aftermarket ones, and that you just sit it down, and that's where it sits. Makes life a little easier. So what I'm gonna do, obviously, it's a little hard to bend the pipe up and around into there when you can't get in there. So I'm just gonna make a mark between the pickup is, is all about touching here. Obviously, that's without the gasket, but uh, the process of this exercise, I'm gonna make a, a mark there and then take this out and tack the, the pickup to the bottom of the pan there. Um, and then that way I can flip it over on the bench, set that into position, make the hose in between, make the pipe, not hose, we're gonna use, uh, I've actually got some uh, three quarter inch chrome oil tube there. Uh, we're gonna bend up, make the um, the piece that goes in between, and then we're gonna purge weld it. I'm gonna show you how to purge weld so you can get a nice clean weld inside, know that no shit's gonna get into your engine. Right, so I've tucked, that's our little spout, that goes out of our pickup. Just a uh, oil filter goes here, and that, got to go around somehow this has got to end up in there so I've put this is just a bit of 10 mil plate simulator 10 mil 3 8 of an inch pretty close packer to lift our pickup off the bottom of the uh, the pan and so that's just going to sit on there and then we're going to get some chromoly tube from upstairs and a tube bender and we're going to Try to bend up a bit of tube. The angles aren't favourable, um, but we'll see what we can make work. So just about to hook in and bend our pickup tube, chrome, uh, three quarter inch chromoly tube for the for the pickup. This is our little bender we use for all small stuff like that. Um, it's not my favourite bender, that's for sure. It's Chinese, it's cheap. It could have been made a lot better, but it does the job for the smaller stuff. Uh, we actually do a lot of bending here at Motofab. This is the next step up. This is our JD squared bender, made in the USA. These are absolutely brilliant. Uh, yeah, for a, a hand operated draw through bender, yeah, it's, it, the quality is, is all but as good as our, our big mandrel bender. So we use this for all our roll cages, control arms, anything that we need to bend, uh, anything. This one sort of up to one inch and then from one inch up we use this. Uh, and then for anything we're doing Production wise, we use a big bertha over here. Um, it's a bit hard to see because it's a bit of a piece of sheet stacked in front of it, but it'll actually take a full length of tube. Um, it's got all the, all the automatic stops and stuff on it, so you can set all your stops and run through for production runs. Uh, it's got a, this uh, wiper die actually pushes through with the mandrel, you can see there the mandrel with the balls and it, um, you can actually set it up auto, so bang, 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 clamps, pushes the mandrel forward, bends, and then does the whole process in, in reverse. Um, so if we're doing anything, all of our production stuff that we do, we use this machine, we've got, it's got a little uh, foot controls here, and you got six different bends you can set up digitally, and you can actually run processes through to do six bends in sequence. Um, where you can go through and bend whichever bend you're doing if you're doing a lot of the same thing but yeah we, we use that a lot um, takes a little bit to get to know how to use one that's for sure a few years practice 
Uh, but it's yeah, good. So you sort of, it's good to have everything all covered from from really small. We've got little brake line benders as well, smaller again. But yeah, a bit of everything, one end of the scale to the other. So let's bend this tube. Right here we are, purge welding. Well, non-purge welding first. Let's um, let me come down a bit. Uh, show you what it does. Non-purge first. That's just a normal weld. Bloody you guys will notice, I always check my uh, gas on my face there, trying to zap myself. Um, when you're in a noisy workshop with a lot of people working around, you, you can't always hear the gas. There's nothing worse than getting everything lined up nice and neat, and then bang, your first weld, the gas is turned off and it makes a mess. It's something you've just spent hours fabricating. So try to get in the habit of checking the gas on your face. That way you can feel it. Uh, so here we go, I'll do a non-purge non first. Perfect. That's a good one. So, it's going to come around so I know you can see what we're looking at. That's a well. No, sorry, it's trying to focus on. nice clean weld but if you look to the inside there you go there you go you get black crusty stuff on the inside now when you're working on an automobile anything um, downstream upstream of the back side of the exhaust valve uh, you don't want to damage you don't want shit on the back that can fly off and damage the engine. So I'm just gonna cut for a sec while I set up the purge and I'll show you through the purge without the welder screaming away so you can hear me. Righto, so this is our purge. Basically we're just sealing up the pipe masking tape. Steg, it's pretty low heat so it doesn't burn the tape too bad. We've just got a bit of rubber hose going in there and a rubber hose is hooked up to a, uh, a bottle of argon. So when we turn that on, it's just gonna pump Can you hear that? It's just going to pump argon through that, uh, through the inside of that, that bit of tube. And um, it's going to give us a nice environment, so we'll call it technical welding terms, for that tube uh, to not, excuse the bad footage here, to not get uh, all sorts of crap on the inside. So let's um, turn the welder back on, turn the purge on, and uh, I'll show you. So, watch me grab the hot spot. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's a good one. So that's our first one. You can see there's um, there's all sorts of crusty black stuff hanging out the back of it. And then that is our roll around because you know that spot's good. That's our one that's purged. So you can see it's it's smooth. It's good, there's nothing gonna come off that and go. Now the reason why, when you weld it without the purge, it's, there's air on the other side, there's contaminants in our, in our atmosphere. When the metal gets glowing hot, the contaminants burn onto the surface of the metal and they cause it to, um, to blister and uh, there's 
there's technical words for it that I can't remember right now, but um, yeah, when you put gas onto the back side of the weld, onto the glowing part, you get a nice clean environment for the metal to cool and stay nice and neat. Sometimes if the heat's right, you actually get pretty much like a duplicate of the weld on the other side, on the inside. That was just me mucking around the welder so you can see what's going on. So there you go, that's purge welding. So we'll definitely use that on an oil pump pickup inside of an inner cooler pipe, inside of an inlet manifold, uh, anything that's um, yeah upstream of the backside of the exhaust valve so we don't get crap in our, in our motor. So there we go, pickup is all together and in there. Let's pop this uh, pan off. It's gonna be over one end. Excuse me for one sec. There we go. So it's all tucked together. We'll, uh, we'll purge roll it now. And then uh, later on, we'll, we'll try to get a tab off one of the bolts um, so that it can't rattle out over here. We'll put a little brace up to there so that the, the pickup doesn't slip out of there. So, next is to split the sump part and pop the frame back on there and work on our windage tray and crank scraper. Let's do that. Rightio, we've got our two halves separated and I've just got a bit of cardboard knocked up our windage tray. And then I've already rushed ahead and transferred that cardboard into a piece of sheet metal. And... Sorry, bad filming. So that fits in there like so. And then that should give it nice. There's no uh, corn rods up at the moment. We'll set that exactly. So just folded that up. Just run through folder because it doesn't have to be anything fancy because it's going to get um, a piece cut out of it and some directional mesh put in there anyway. Some expanded metal. stuff is it's directional sort of thing so they um, they'll scrape the oil a bit nicer down to the bottom like it should windage tray zen so we've had the luxury I, I actually don't think you could do it without having a motor complete to do it on upside down it makes it a lot easier so there's a pickup there's a windage tray and the best bit about this is we can Put the sump, or the split sump, uh, on, and I can wind the motor over and make sure that it doesn't touch anywhere. It's pretty close. As you can see, the, um, apparently the closer you run them, the better. They make a horrendous noise when they touch, though. There's a crazy looking pan, all done, ready to weld up. I've just got to put it in those little patch pieces. That's about all I've got time for today, if I want to get this edit out. So, but the other stuff's just easier. We'll just patch up the holes and weld it all up. Uh, you can see there's a mark, the, one of the connecting rods. It's actually just touching two, actually, one there. One there, so that's with no gasket. Uh, with a gasket, I'll probably miss, but I'll still probably get the die grinder in there and just clearance it a little bit so we don't run into any troubles. It's not the world's best oil pan, uh, but in the 
in the um, with the room I have available and the shapes that I've got to work with, I think it's going to do the job. So there you go. It's been a bit of a job, but it's uh, it's on the home straight now. Righto, guys. Something a little bit different for you now. Uh, this is one of the, this is two of the data logs um, out of my Ute bump in. One is a 7.80 at 175 mile an hour, and only a 13260. It wasn't a great truck, and it wasn't a great 60. I don't, unfortunately, I don't actually have the 60 foot data for the second run. This is actually an older one, 2017. It's an 8.0 to 174. Um, and I've got them overlaid so we can look at the difference in a few things. Now, while we're talking about oil pans, um, this, the Jamboree Pass, the 8.0, uh, was an, an, a diff same oil pan, just a different pickup and different. Um, catchment area down the bottom where the pickup is which are because of what this poor performance in oil pressure is why I changed it um, and then I've ended up with this nice stable oil pressure curve that I desired so uh, this, is, this is a bit of data to show you um, I'm not entirely just guessing with this oil pan stuff I have been through it before so if you look here right on the trans brake we're just about to leave the start line we're both almost identical these these two down here are the two oil pressure figures between the two different passes they're um say they're about a year apart or something they're two passes they're both uh around 79 psi of oil pressure there we've got well one exactly one pound difference that's nothing um and they sort of the the new design takes off nicely it builds pressure changes with the gear change holds consistent pressure right through the um the old design pan yeah it, it just goes pear-shaped um and then back there you, you got mm, i've run the, the two passes at the same lined the two times up um so yeah you got 65 psi as opposed to 95 so midway through the pass you're down 30 psi in oil pressure to where that set up ideally i would like it um some people do run pretty low oil pressure but not me i like it high uh so you can see that yeah and that is literally just a different pickup i just modified the pickup modified the pan um and I, it's it's really hard to explain why this up and down in my opinion i, I think it is it's gulping air because it, the oil pan's not performing and that's why you're getting a, a pressure fluctuation um I think what saves the engine is the the spring in the oil pump. Every time it sees a low pressure, it it jams the spring shut to give it a bit of pressure, and it's obviously correcting before the time when it gets to the crank um, enough that it doesn't destroy the bearings. But it's it's not ideal to see the the pressure jumping up and down. That what we really want to see. Sorry, I've just zoomed out. We'll just go back. Oops, forward a bit. Yeah, so what we, we really want to see is a nice smooth one like this top one here. So that's why I've done the, the pan and the pickup and everything the way I've done because I kind of know that it's very similar to this setup here and I know that it works. Uh, you got a few things. you got where the pickup is in relation to the bottom of the pan. You've got where the pickup is. You, you just always want the pickup right at the back. Um, and you've also got exposure to the crank and the windage off the crank that plays a really big part in it too so um so yeah if you if you're watching my my oil pan here it's pretty ugly and this is why i'm doing it the way i'm doing it because it's a bit of a recipe that i know works something well we've got the dialogue open here uh something else is pretty interesting uh, i've had a lot of people ask about the difference between uh why i'm running a three speed in the monara and two speed in the ute here it is, there's a lot of reasons. Um, one, I had it there, it was cheap. Uh, but two, here's a data log. This, the, the 7.8 is a power glide run. The 8.0 is a turbo 400 run. 174, 175 mile an hour is pretty similar. Everything else is, the times weren't too far off, two tenths is a little bit, but 
Um, yeah, let's have a look at a few things. You can see, let's go to around, uh, let me just get my bearings because I was just looking at the screen. Um, right, I, let's look here. Let's go over this pressure. This is after the shift, so it's not a fair compare. Oh, it's kind of fair. Uh, if you look at the boost on the power glide, we're at 29 pounds um, at 2.4 seconds in. We're 25 pounds with the three speed. The three speed's got a lower gear to start, so it doesn't have to work so hard to achieve the same acceleration. Um, the RPM difference, we're a lot more RPM with the glide because we're just about to shift. So let's move along to where it's a little bit fairer. Um, we've shifted first, second with both boxes here. Um, still 25 pounds versus 29 pounds. Uh, so the, the power glide car, you're having to put more power to go the same acceleration. Um, the area where I had an issue with the 400 with that car is, is this, this part here, the, the one two shift, um, you're, you're 1.9 seconds out. The car is still reasonably unstable. You know, front wheels can still be bouncing around a little bit. The car can still be sort of scrambling to track straight. A lot of things can be happening and, and bang, you're trying to shift the gear all of a sudden. A little bit of extra time with the power glide. The car seems to have just settled down. Shift happens. It's all nice. Um, so the... The first gear was a little aggressive with the um, with that setup, but and so we were having a bit of trouble with it breaking loose on that one two shift with the power glide. It never ever does it. It's, it's two point three seconds out. It happens. It's it's settled a lot more at that stage. The rest of the run, once they're in top gear for the better part, everything else is is pretty much the same. Uh, but then if you go to what's also very interesting. Pretty sure these times these are pretty similar passes, 60 foot wise. You can see the RPM of the 400 climbs a lot quicker. Obviously, that first gear ratio. You see the the power glide sort of labours comes out. It's sort of flashing up on the converter there, and then it's labouring again once the converter takes up. Um, diff gears will definitely help that. It's only got three, two, five diff gears in it. So, but is a comparison of one for one. Yeah, we're coming out pretty similar. And then, well, we're not actually. We're leaving the line 11.2 pounds on the power glide and 9.8 pounds. A lot, a bit less boost on the 400 to do the same job and 100 RPM less as well. So you can see that the, the Turbo 400 is, is doing the job easier. Now that's with a turbo car where I've got the power available. I can just turn the boost up. Uh, I can just put more RPM in make the power make the difference and and then actually inevitably go faster with the gear less and the lesser ratio but with a monaro i'm going to be you know capped at power i can only make so much power out of that engine so i want every advantage i can get so i, I believe having that extra first gear because it's all done and dusted in the 60 foot that's where you make a fast pass so i believe that having that extra gear if this if i can get it to leave um, and have all the power in really quickly, it's just going to be beneficial to have that extra gear. Whereas with a power glide, if you, you know, you leave and you've got all your power in, it's, there's nothing else you can do. It's all in. Whereas with the, the 400, it's all in, plus you've got a better ratio to take advantage of it. So yeah, let me know what you think. This is the first bit of tuning I've gone into on the channel. Um, or data logging. We'll do a bit of tuning stuff as well, but it's, yeah, let me know what interests you guys and what you'd like to know more about and maybe we'll get it as a more regular segment. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the episode. It is chilly now. This is it's cold weather. This should be drag racing time of the year. Uh, I really miss going racing, loading up, camping out the track. It's um, Can't wait to get back into it. Go away, COVID, so we can get out there and race again. But for the moment, it's helping me because it's giving me a chance to get that Monaro finished. So I can't complain about that.
But yes, thank you very much for liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching. Hope you're enjoying the episodes. Can't wait to get this thing running and make some noise. Check it out. See ya.